everybody. I am Anna Bryce, the VP of Programming for the AMA Phoenix, and welcome. And we are so thrilled to have Kate Wilson with us. Uh, we were trying to remember when we had her the first time, and we think it was January 2018, already three over three years ago. And we just felt that now with everything that's gone on lately, the past 16, 18 months, we thought this was the time to deal with if we are feeling burned out, how we can recapture your time, energy, resources, and reimagine the possibility. So we welcome Kate and Evelyn Vega will introduce her in just a moment. I very quickly want to um, thank our sponsors Without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to bring the education resources that we bring to you and these events. So we do thank them. And I would in particular like to point out Taylor Wellman, who is our host uh, from Financial Potion. So if you have any, uh, any video needs, please um, reach out to Taylor or you can reach out to me. You have my email address and I can connect the two of you. And then we would also <clears throat> like to thank our supporters. And these are the companies who um, employ our board members. Our board members work very hard and without the support of their companies, this just wouldn't happen. So we thank them. And I'd like to get right into um, introducing Kate. So Evelyn Vega, who is our VP of Career Development uh, at the AMA Phoenix, uh, will take it away. Welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're here with us today. <clears throat> I'm Evelyn Vega. I'm past president of the AMA Phoenix chapter and I now serve as their VP of Career Development and Professional Development. My day job is working for Staffing Strong, and Staffing Strong is a national marketing, digital, and creative recruitment firm placing highly qualified um, professionals across the U.S., either on a contract, contract to hire, and permanent basis. We would love to be a resource for all of you, so please reach out to us. Also, my colleague Amy Roberts is on the Zoom as well, and our contact information will be in the chat box. Um, I have the... Um, privilege of introducing our speaker today, Kate Wilson, who is the founder of Kamaji Tree Consulting. And I have to tell you that Kate has been very instrumental in developing our company, Staffing Strong, on shifting our scarcity mindset and finding real success. And I'm hopeful that she can help you and your company do that too. Um, a little bit about Kate. She's originally from Australia, which I love Australian accents, who doesn't, right? Um, she's spent the last 15 years consulting internationally as a gender and social development specialist, working in partnerships with foreign governments, international organizations, and private sector companies to create economic and social development. Kate has also has, also has more than 10 years working as a life, business, and leadership mentor. Kate's vast experience working in remote communities with a high level of um, global leaders has taught her the ability to create that great change that exists within each and every one of us. Is that change begins within those individual seeds. Kate is dedicated to helping leaders and change makers be the best version of themselves so they are in a better position to drive um, positive change in their businesses, organizations, and communities and increase their contribution and impact in the world. So please everyone help me in welcoming Kate Wilson. Thanks, Evelyn. I'm happy to be here again. And I can't believe it's been three years. Feels like not that long, for sure. All right, so um, I wanna start by saying um, I'm a super informal person. So um, I would love for this session to be as interactive and practical as possible. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of talking at the start just to kind of frame the presentation and what I want us to focus on today. But um, the 
biggest part of the time is going to be, I really want to teach you one of my favorite tools that I have developed for helping you with your own thought process um, and helping you with your mindset. So I'll definitely be looking for a guinea pig. So if you are having a challenge at work or a challenge at home that you would be willing to share. Um, and so we can work through that challenge together using the tool and then everyone else can follow along with the process, keeping in mind a challenge that they might have. Um, so that's, that's how the format of today is going to uh, work. Um, and I know usually we leave questions to the end, but I wanted to be a bit different today and ask, um, you know, what brought you here? And does anyone have a question, a specific question that you want to make sure that I answer? Because um, I would love to give you a chance to ask that at the start of the presentation so I can make sure that I cover that off. So um, if you do, feel free to unmute yourself and just ask the question. If, um, or you can type it in the chat if you feel more comfortable doing so. But really curious, like, what is it that you really want to know and get out of today? If anyone wants to share. For me, Kate, it's literally that burned out feeling. And um, I think we're, you know, being remote, we're almost feeling like we're not doing enough, but we're probably working more and harder being remote. Mm -hmm. um, so again, just trying to find some secrets, some tips. One gem is all I need to walk away with today. Okay. And what, how are you hoping that that gem would make you feel? I think a little more relieved. I feel like I'm far more anxious than I've ever been. And okay. I think I even told you the other day that I was doing my little escapes to Sedona just to like save my mind, you know, four <laughs> months in a row, I went to Sedona just to, you know, really save my sanity almost. Yeah. Okay. So feeling a sense maybe of peace or just something that you can hold on to, to take Correct. away some hope, <laughs> but it could be different. Yes. 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 Yeah. Anyone else? I, I do. I, I agree with Nancy. Nancy mentioned earlier, this is perfect timing for this because of the pandemic and, and along the same lines of what Anna said, you know, um, I think we're just all feeling so burned out on, on this whole pandemic thing, not to say that, you know, it's out there and, um, you know, it, it's a crazy time for everybody, but um, I guess just the, the feeling of overwhelmed with it. So mm -hmm. maybe trying to get out of this, what can we do to not feel that way? What are some yeah. techniques that will help us not feel so overwhelmed with this, with everything that's going on right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely going to cover that. Because one of the outcomes that I'm hoping for from today is that everyone will go away and never use the word overwhelmed ever again in the same way. <laughs> uh, and I'll talk about why. I think some, to add to what Anna was saying, one of the things that I would look for is it seems that at every turn, things that we were accustomed to doing there's always some type of roadblock or negative or something to overcome. So it's how, how to find those little moments of just appreciation for something that went right or to really look at from the positive. Seems like when there's a, a question or we're dealing with something, you're always looking for, okay, where's the downside? Where's the problem so I can overcome it? Being a planner myself, I'm always looking into the future. How can I avert a, an issue? So it's how yeah. can I flip that to look at some look at it from perspective of being grateful for and appreciate what's good about what's in front of me or what's good about today to kind of look for the positives and share that rather than always looking for problem solving. Right. So okay. how to find that that kind of 
flip it to that positive balance given everything that's going on. Right. I might address that now a little bit and then I can do it more throughout the presentation. Um, I was listening to a podcast by Brene Brown the other day and it was a great reminder for me that gratitude is a practice and not a feeling. And so I know as we're going through the pandemic and we are feeling more and more and more and more worn down, it can be harder and harder and harder to actually find things to feel grateful for. Um, and sometimes, you know, we are thinking that we need to feel that sense of gratitude. And she reminds me that it's actually a practice. Um, and so the example that she gave, you know, her family before the pandemic would always do a gratitude practice at mealtime um, and share something that they're grateful for. But as the pandemic has rolled on and they're feeling more stressed, more overwhelmed, they feel like the, the practice has slipped off. Um, because they're feeling like there's less and less things, you know, they're not necessarily feeling grateful. They're just feeling overwhelmed and stressed and like there's too much to do. Um, and so I think there's an invitation in it, in this for all of us to realize that gratitude is a practice, not a feeling. And so is there a practice that you might have done in the past that you stopped doing? or an actual practice that you can start doing that is about gratitude. So for me, I just like to keep a gratitude journal and to write down things each day that I'm grateful for. Um, and a practice that I, I like to do with my husband is taking the time at the end of the day to share with each other, I'm really grateful that you did this for me today. And one thing I love about you is... And one thing I love about myself is, and then we will switch and he'll say to me, oh, I'm grateful that, you know, you took the kids here and did this. And one thing I love about you is, and then one thing I love about myself is. Um, often I find that the hardest part of that process is finding something to love about myself. But again, in this time during the pandemic, I think more than ever, we need to be actively reminding ourselves uh, because I think so many of us are feeling like we're just failing at everything like there isn't enough time um, for me mother guilt is really real I my youngest son is eight and then I have two stepsons 11 and 18 um, you know I'm not cut out to homeschool and run a business and all of these things and just feeling like um you know, I know that I'm a smart, capable person, but sometimes my family, I can feel like an absolute failure. So reminding myself like, oh, even like, oh, one thing I love about myself is my eyes or, you know, my curly hair or um, some days it's easier to find something that I love about myself, depending on how I've judged, how well I've performed as a mother and uh, in my job. Um, so I really love that practice. I think I do have that on my website, but I'll make sure that I, I share that with you as well. Um, and it's great um, to create connection in your relationship and also something you could do with kids or really anyone. You could even do it at the office if you wanted to create that sense. But yeah, it was really good to be reminded, yes, it's a practice. It's not a feeling. And I can practice gratitude even if I'm not feeling it. And then, you know, that helps me to start feeling it. Yeah. Anyone else? April has her hand raised. April, do you want to just go ahead and unmute and chat? Sure. Um, I just wanted to celebrate and uh, show, uh, and I totally agree with you. I think you're spot on, Kate. And um, just wanted to share with you something that I found out about myself, which was, um, I needed something to celebrate the quick wins or the wins in general, like in my life. And so um, I was talking to my friend about it and was like, I want a little tiny horn or something that's so I can toot my own horn or something. And um, she sent me this in the mail. It's a nail <laughs> button. And um, you just nailed it. And it just <laughs> has like eight different sayings. And it's just something that 
reminds me to like celebrate my successes and I brought it into meetings and things and Anna loves it. She's like, just, just do this. <laughs> I, I'm always on the other end hitting her nailed it button. So, <laughs> so I think having I something that. like this, you know, that's like a little, a little thing that you do every time you have a really silver lining moment where something doesn't catastrophically go wrong and you're celebrating your quick win, like just be like, you can celebrate it and give yourself the allowance to be able to celebrate when you are doing well because sometimes when you're our noses to the grindstone we just don't celebrate when we when we do win i love that thank you for sharing happy to do so <laughs> all right well i'm gonna jump in and do a little bit more talking and uh feel free uh, to unmute yourself anytime and ask questions. But I really want to make sure that we have time to practice the practice. So I'm just going to give you um, a quick overview about how the mind works um, so that it can put some of what we're talking about in context. Because I think, you know, as we've all already shared, this last year or 18 months, or I don't even know how long it's been going on now with COVID, I think has been you know, even more challenging for so many of us, so much has changed. So many of us are feeling stressed, overwhelmed, burnt out, um, you know, like there's just never enough time to do, well, I, I don't know about you, but like for me, it's always, there isn't enough time for me to do what I want and need because I'm spending all of my time doing all of the things that I think I should be doing, the things that I think I'm supposed to be doing. Um, you know, it's that life of obligation, rules and expectations and the idea that I'm supposed to take care of everyone and everything. Um, and that has really played out in my life because of my own mindset issues. So I'm definitely a recovering people pleaser and perfectionist. So everything that I'm talking about here today, I can relate to. And all of the, the tools that I'm going to share with you are, are tools that I use to keep myself on track as well. Because just because I'm sitting in this seat doesn't mean that I don't share in a lot of, you know, what everybody is feeling and experiencing. Um, but, you know, I make sure that I use the tools that I have. And so understanding for me, like one of the things that helped me the most was understanding, like, why do I do what I do? Like, why do I always think that I have to make sure my husband's happy and my kids are happy and bend over backwards? Like, why have in the past did I find it hard to say no to people and have boundaries? Why did I spend a lot of my life, you know, um, reading and rereading an email that I was going to send to make sure, you know, you know, an email that could take 10 minutes. Why did it take me an hour? Because I needed to make sure that I got the words right and be perfect and not ever want to upset anybody. Like, why did I do all of that? Because ultimately the, all of the taking care of others and perfectionism and people pleasing was just exhausting me. And then, you know, you add the pandemic on top of that. And if you're a perfectionist and a people pleaser, and you're spending a lot of time taking care of other people, like it's going to be even more difficult to go through this. And so what helped me the most was to really understand how does the mind work? So I'm going to give a super basic overview um, and hopefully that will help you uh, as well. So essentially the role of our mind is to keep us safe. So our mind is always on the lookout for danger. And so 75% of our thoughts have some form of negative content because that is the role of our mind to keep like pointing out to us things that it thinks could be dangerous or perceives to be dangerous to make sure that we're aware of it so that we don't do anything that is basically going to cause us to die. So our mind is basically trying to keep us from dying. And so if you think back to cavemen days, you know, in order not to die, we needed to fit in and belong 
and have value in the tribe. Otherwise, we would get kicked out and we would be dead. So um, it wasn't possible to survive back then on your own. And so what happened is, and as we've evolved over, you know, thousands of years, um, and we've evolved into the sort of nuclear family unit, is when we're little and growing up, we learn really quickly who do we have to be and how do we have to show up in our family in order to belong and fit in and feel significant and to be loved. And so what's happening is you're growing up as a little kid and you've got all of these things going on around you. So it might be that, you know, your dad is an alcoholic and, um, you know, him and your mum fight all of the time and that doesn't feel safe for you as a little kid. And you're trying to make sense of the situation to understand, like, what is going on around me? Is this situation safe or not? And as a kid, the only way that we can make sense of anything is to make it about us. So no matter what's going on as a kid, we would have always made it about us. So let's just say um, there was a lot of volatility between your parents. Um, part of you could possibly decide, um, okay, like the way to keep mum and dad happy is I have to be super good all the time. Like I don't want to cause any more problems in the family. And I know like when I'm good, then, um, you know, maybe that's going to help things or um, they're acting this way because of something I did. So let's just say, you're, you know, your mum works all the time. She's never there or, you know, um, the little kid would go, the only way that I can make sense of the fact that my mum is never there is to think it must be me. Like if she loved me, she'd be here. Um, I mustn't be good enough. Or uh, a lot of people who have been adopted have, uh, no, and no matter how good or bad the experience in their adoptive family is, their pr first relationship was that they were given up. And so there's that wound of like, there's something wrong with me. I wasn't good enough. Um, so we, we make up all of these stories about ourselves to explain what's going on. Um, and we learn who do we have to be and how do we have to show up? <clears throat> so, you know, uh, a lot of my clients that come to me, uh, especially women, whatever was going on in the family, like I have one client right now and her parents and her brother had a lot of challenges. The police would get called. There was all of these issues. And so the role that she took on in the family was like, I have to be good. Um, and I have to like, please my parents because they've got enough stuff going on. So everything that I do, I have to make sure that I don't disappoint them and I don't let them down. I never upset them. And so she's now, you know, in her thirties and her life, all of the decisions that she's made and how it's been structured is all about still making sure that she doesn't disappoint her parents, let them down. So she's in a job that she doesn't like um, because that's the job that she thought like her dad would most approve of. Um, and she's really worried about leaving that job because she doesn't want to disappoint him. So the mind is always making up all of these stories in order to keep us safe and to protect us. And a lot of how we are today as adults is unconscious programming from when we were young. And so a lot of how we show up um, in different situations and how we react um, and the choices that we make can often be unconscious. And the mind, you know, it's trying to keep us safe. So it wants us to stay where we are, even if we're not happy because the mind doesn't like the unknown. All of this is like an elaborate strategy to not die, basically. And the annoying thing about the human species is like our body will have the same physiological response to a thought or to perceived danger as it will to real danger. So like in this case, my client, she really wants to leave her job. She's working for her dad. 
Um, but she's so afraid of having that conversation with him. It, it causes that fight or flight response in her body every time she just thinks about it, right? Because in her mind, her mind is like, it's not safe. This isn't safe. Like the safest option would be just to keep working and not disappoint your dad. So um, how we show up in life today and the life that you have today is based on your mindset and the beliefs that you have about yourself. And it's all this elaborate strategy to keep you safe. And so the way that you might like react to a challenge at work or a challenge in your family, like is all based on this inbuilt programming. And some of it might be conscious and some of it might be unconscious. You know, so for me, you know, my parents struggled with mental illness when I was young. And so I took on that, like, it's my job to take care of them. Like, and they'll be, I want to make them happy. So I need to take care of them. And so then that sort of translated through into my adult life, always trying to take care of everyone around me, people pleasing until like I had nothing left for myself. And so when we find ourselves feeling burnt out and overwhelmed and stuck um, and exhausted, um, our sort of default is to kind of hustle to do more and be more. Like the mind will basically tell us, well, if you just do it more perfect or you just do kind of more output, like that's how to fix it. Um, the other strategy that we often employ is, oh, if only my kids would listen to me. If only my husband would help out around the house more and make dinner. If only like my boss didn't have such high expectations, um, I would feel better. And so we're constantly focusing outside of ourselves on the if only something external would change so that I could feel better. And that is one of the worst, like the two worst words you can say to yourself because the if only and then focusing on something outside of yourself is just a big distraction from focusing on what you really need to do to create change and to have an experience of peace is I need to look at what's going on inside of me. Uh, and I need to look at my beliefs and my patterns and my programs and ask myself, oh, am I exhausted because I have too much to do? Or am I exhausted because I'm afraid if I don't do it, I'm going to let somebody down. Um, and I have had this conversation with a lot of clients about using the word overwhelmed. So I think a lot of us use the word overwhelmed when we are feeling like we have too many things to do and not enough time to do them. But if you have a busy job and a family and you have kids and the kids play sports or you have extended family or elderly parents that you're taking care of us like the fact is society is getting more and more complicated every day and all of us probably always have a lot of things to do um, and my experience is if we can stop um wishing that we didn't have so much to do and embrace the fact that you have a busy life and then ask yourself, what is it that I'm actually worried about? And in my case, and I've experienced this with clients as well, is for me, like when I was asked by my coach, is it that you have too much to do or is there something else that's actually the problem? I had to ask myself, well, what would happen if I didn't get that done? right? And if I didn't get that done, I was worried that I was going to disappoint someone. So for me, it's actually a fear of disappointing people. And then I also have a fear of, I, I want people to think that I have it all together. And if I don't get that done, then maybe they'll think that I don't have it together. And so for me, the key to working on my own overwhelm was starting to look more at my need, like my fear of disappointing people and my fear of people thinking like I don't have it together. 
And so if you find yourself using the word overwhelm a lot, I would invite you to stop and ask yourself that same question. Is it that I have too much to do? Or is it that I'm worried about letting someone down, disappointing someone, somebody thinking that? And if that's the case, then maybe you can work on that. Um, and it might also be, I have too many things to do because I don't have boundaries and I'm not good at saying no. And that usually always comes back to, I'm worried about disappointing people and letting them down. So um, the people pleasing is a big one. And you cannot create connected, loving relationships through people pleasing. Um, so if you're wanting to experience more connection in your relationships, people pleasing is not the way to go about it. Um, okay. And so I think, you know, the point is if, if we grew up feeling like I need to be good to be loved or never feeling good enough, it's about the lengths that we will go to to prove that, right? So if I feel like I'm never good enough, then I will go to all of these lengths to try to prove to other people and the world that I am, even if those things exhaust me, wear me out, and they're not good for me. Or if I feel like I, um, you know, only have value, like people only love me if I'm doing something for them, think of the lengths that I will go to, to, you know, to prove that to the world. Um, so, and that's the challenge in all of this is like the lengths that we go to, to prove that we are good enough to prove that we can make everyone happy. Um, and the lengths that we'll go to, to keep ourselves safe, but it's not real safety. It's just the perception or the illusion of safety because the mind, you know, like I said, 75% of our thoughts are fear-based, they have some form of negative content. And 99% of the time, what we think does ne never eventuates, but it doesn't stop us from thinking it. Um, and then the trick is, is that, so that is never going to change. So a lot of people will try to push away their negative thoughts and think, oh, I shouldn't feel this way. I shouldn't think this way. Or like, um, drink alcohol to make them go away or numbing tactics like, you know, one of my uh, biggest challenges like Netflix and Facebook scrolling, like they're real numbers. Like I can just not feel anything if I just stay on Facebook long enough, right? Um, so the invitation is to accept like, all right, 75% of what I'm thinking is probably going to be fear-based and worry. Like now I need a tool to deal with that because that's not going to change. Um, and so that's what I want to teach now is this tool. And I'm realizing the time. So we're going to, I'm going to ask for, well, first of all, does that make sense? And any questions? I see nodding. Cool. Um, I love talking about this and I could talk about it for hours. An hour is just not long enough, but so I'll do my best. Um, but I really want to teach you the tool. Um, so uh, does anyone have a, like a challenge that they're having at work or at home that you would be willing to share? And I can use this tool to sort of step you through how you would use it um, yourself um, so that you have that to take away with you. If no one else does, so say now if you do, if no one else does, Evelyn, will you, um, you said you would volunteer. Um, well, one of them was she kind of explained why I shouldn't use overwhelmed anymore. <laughs> so um, it's not the overwhelming, maybe it's some things that I need to figure out what it is, but um, let me think of, you know, I, I think with work and at home, um, it's pretty much the same. There's so much going on with, you know, everything that's going on right now with your kids, kids just starting school, um, 
you know, if things are starting to pick up at work, um, we're doing a lot of different new processes, new technology, everything at work. So I'm trying not to use the word overwhelmed. <laughs> you have uh, a lot going on. Yeah, there, there's a lot going on. So, um, and how's it making you feel? Well, I guess if I don't get it done, I'm kind of failed. Okay. And, and so I you're... let my team down. I let my team down if I don't get it done. If I don't get get it done, I let my clients down. Right. Um, sometimes, you know, we have to say no to clients. I mean, we're all marketers. Sometimes our clients are like, hey, we need to get this marketing campaign out by um, Friday, right? Which it doesn't work that way. You know, it takes time to do stuff or um, you know, even in recruitment. Hey, we need this unicorn and we need this person by tomorrow. But sometimes, you know, now, especially since COVID, you know, COVID hit a lot of our businesses. So we're taking the business in and we want to make sure we're getting it done. Um, and we don't want to let them down. So we don't say no. So that, that's okay. something we need to work on too. Okay. So everyone can follow along. So maybe bring to mind a challenge that you might be having yourself and you can follow along and work on your own challenge. You're going to take a piece of paper and divide it into three columns. So just like that. <laughs> I love this, by the way, my husband bought this for me. It's a remarkable and I can like take handwritten notes and it will turn them into typed text for me. It's like my favorite thing. Okay, so Evelyn, what I'm hearing you say is you've just got, you feel like you maybe have too much going on right now um, and you have some worry like that you can't say no to things because coming out of COVID, like you wanna build your business up again. So how do I build my business up again, but like without as maybe as much stress or anxiety um, and feeling like too many things are happening at once. Is that, is that a good summary? Yes. Okay. I'm wanting to so, get it, I don't wanna let my family down either, right? Okay. So in the first column, so this exercise is called facts versus fake news. So I, took that one, you know, from the last president and I've used it in a, in a thing. <laughs> Facts versus fake news. Okay, so in column one, let's write down the facts about the situation. And we wanna stick to only the facts. Um, so Evelyn, what are the facts about this situation? And so if you're following along, you can either listen or you can write down some of the facts about the situation that you have in your mind or both. Tell me the facts. Um, okay. The facts is it is getting busier. So you're busy. Yep. Busy with, you know, new clients, whatnot. Um, the fact mm -hmm. that we are busy internally because we've, you know, we've developed some new processes, new systems that we're learning all mm -hmm. that. We have a new employee. Yep. So, you know, there's some, you know, some training and, and whatnot. So that takes time, right? Yep. yep. Um, kids have started school. Kids have started school. They just started school. Yep. Um, and trying to maneuver that. My kids have started a brand new school. So that's been a little nutty. Um, mm -hmm. My husband's business has been crazy bonkers. He's in real estate. So um, yep. it's really crazy. So, you know, he doesn't have much, you know, time. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, we just hired a new business coach for our company. So there's all these new initiatives you want to do um, with that. Yep. Yep. Okay. So any other facts? Um, the facts are, it seems like <laughs> A lot of our clients want these unicorns. <laughs> okay. Um, so our clients are like demanding stuff because they're yeah. coming out of COVID too. Yeah, they're coming out of COVID too. They're getting busy and they want everyone to do everything. So, you know, it's our part, it's our job to educate them. But um, yeah. it seems like that's getting crazy. And also another thing too, is there's a skill sort shortage out there for a lot of um, specialized positions that we recruit mm -hmm. for. Um, so that's challenging. So that okay. can be a little stressful. 
Okay. Okay, is that a good overview of the facts, do you think? So you're busy, got new clients, new processes, new employees. So there's a lot of new stuff. Kids right. starting a new school. Also, your husband is busy and has less time. Um, and your clients are also coming out of COVID. So they're feeling maybe like they need to hustle to get shit done. And right. then they're sort of like projecting that hustle to get shit done onto you. Right. And then it feels like okay. it rolling downhill to us right yeah okay beautiful okay so they are the facts all right so now in the second column which is called the fake news column tell me what is the story that you are making up about this situation so you're super busy and feeling overwhelmed and if you don't get stuff done, what's going to happen? Tell me the story. Um, our clients won't ever come back to us. They'll be disappointed. Um, our candidates but, will be disappointed. Um, oh, we'll lose the we'll lose our jobs if we don't get it done. Okay. Um, yep. Banned by the river. Banned by the river. Go with it. Go with it. Yeah, April. <laughs> okay, so you, you client, so there'll be a lot of people who will be disappointed in you. Yes. Yep. If you don't, if you don't deliver and get all these things done and take care of all of your responsibilities, um, you could lose your job. What else? I mean, I'm, we're, I'm fearful of making our can our clients look bad because they're in pain too, right? So. Okay. So, um, yeah, someone said losing face, losing face. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Lose face. Uh-huh. Anything else? If you lose face, what would happen? Um, it would hurt our reputation. We won't get any more business from them. We don't get business yep. again. Here's a soap opera, I guess. We'll lose yep. our jobs. Or my husband will be, you know, disappointed. My kids, you know, will be disappointed. Um, yep. It just keeps trickling. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in this column, for those following on, this is like where you basically have to go, because this is what your mind does. Your mind is like, what if, what if, right. what if, what if, and it's always negative, right? Right. And so we never, we never, what if in the positive, we will always default to what if I don't get it done? And then what if that happens? And then what if that happens? And then what if, and what if, and what if, and what if until, you know, we've worked ourselves up in a frenzy, uh, really um, catastrophized the whole situation. So, yeah. So if we had more time, we could go into that more and we could sort of explore some of this. But now what I want to invite Evelyn to do is like, what do you notice when you look at the facts versus the story? And what do you feel in your body? So maybe close your eyes and connect to your body and just think about the facts. Okay, busy, lots of new things happening. Yep. Lots of good things happening, but I'm really busy and right. I have a lot of responsibilities. But uh, what do you notice in your body? Just think about the facts. Well, maybe some of them are, are blown up to be soap operas. <laughs> um, the facts, it is busy. That is a fact. But right. I guess I have a choice to, to pick and choose. And the facts are, I mean, we've been in this, I have colleagues that I've worked with for seven years and we've been doing this for so long and we've always survived. So, right. gosh. Um, so can you see the difference between the facts and the story and see how much meaning you have attached to the story, the fake news? Can you see the difference between the two? Yes. Definitely. So the, the facts are you're busy. And so is it that you're busy? that is the problem or is it that you're so afraid of disappointing people and losing everything yeah it's that that you put lots of pressure on yourself 
to never disappoint anyone and to deliver and to never say no. Yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. So the busyness isn't in itself isn't the problem. And so for everyone following along, like the idea is to just highlight there is always a difference between the facts and then the story that we make up about it. And the story that you make up about it is going to be, you know, individual to you, right? And whatever your shit is, basically. So, but a lot of us do suffer from, I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want to let people down. Uh, I can't say no. And, And basically what's happening in your mind is your mind is like, You have to please everyone or you're going to be out of the tribe and you're going to be dead, right? So this all comes back down to don't die, right? And so Evelyn's mind has done a great job because she's alive and she's not dead. So the mind is like, we don't care if you're drowning and all of this work. We're just happy that you're not dead. And that's the most important thing, right? And again, so a lot of this is unconscious. So the good part of this process is starting to take the unconscious and make it visible and be like oh yeah like I do that and if we were in a coaching session you know I would probably then explore with Evelyn this um, fear of disappointing people in more detail so we could really get to the bottom of that and try to clear that um but I want to move on so you only have 10 minutes to the third part of the process which is really important and it, it's called what if upping So in the second column, we went like, what if, what if, bad, 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 doom, gloom, dead, right? And that's what we will automatically default to because of how we are hardwired. So we need to practice defaulting to like, well, what if, and we need to go up, 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 up. Like, what if, what are all the good things that could happen? What if everything turned out right? So we're going to brainstorm uh, that. So like simple things, like what if um, you uh, were easily able to take care of all the things that you needed to? What if you could delegate some of the things that you're responsible for to other people? Um, Even if your husband is busy, like what if you asked him for help And he was happy to give you help. Like, what if your relationship with your client was so strong and they valued your work so much, they were happy to give you an extension? Like, um, what if you started getting more comfortable having difficult conversations with your clients and having boundaries? Um, What if your new employee, like, just was able to do a bunch of stuff really fast Um, and you didn't need to give them as much training as possible so you tell me some what ifs Evelyn they're just some examples of like how we can what if up this no I was even thinking what if I could ask my kids to do some of the things for me so I can get some other things done yes yes Um, what if they knew that you loved them already and that you did enough for them and you didn't have to keep proving to them you loved them by doing more things for them exactly and I think same with clients as well I think they're all they're kind of I'm sure they're in the same boat right yeah so um yeah I I guess it's just assumptions that I'm making in my head what if they you know they I lose their respect and whatnot but I think if I'm true to it I think it, they'll probably yes. respect us more. Yes. Sure. And that's where it's like, I love and respect myself enough to set a boundary with them, but I also love and respect them enough to set the boundary with them. Like you're, you're doing it for both of you. Setting boundaries isn't about just about them. It's like, no, I love and respect myself enough to say I need another week. And I love and respect you enough and our relationship enough to tell you I need another week. And then they can choose whether they want to honor that or not. But you've loved and respected yourself and the relationship and the trust that you have in that relationship enough to ask. Uh, And that counts for a lot. 
Right. And I mean, I was even thinking, even trusting my colleagues too. Right. Yes. Because they're probably feeling the same way. And we have, I have a soap opera in my head, I guess. Yes. On how they yeah. react. Yeah. Yeah, so in this third column, that's what we do. And it can be hard in the first instance to do that. So if I always recommend, you know, if you have a friend in this group that now knows how to do this and you're noticing yourself struggling, what if upping can be a lot more fun and helpful doing it with somebody else or in a group even. So like we can all just throw out like, well, what if and what if and what if? And the idea is when we're what if upping, we're not limiting ourselves to whether we think it's possible or not, or whether we think it could happen or not. We're just throwing out any idea. Because let's face it, when we what if down, 99% of the time that shit never happens, but it doesn't stop us from putting it on the paper. But I find when people are first starting to learn this, they're like, they start to what if up and then they talk themselves out of it. like the minute it's come out of their mouth because they're like, oh, well, that could never happen. Oh, like there's always some reason why to not what if up it. Um, and so it's getting in that practice of like, no, 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 no. We don't care if it's possible or not. We're just putting it on the paper in the same way we did with the fake news in the middle column. Um, but Evelyn, do you notice like when you start to what if up, you, you can hopefully now see the difference between the fact the fake news and like what do you notice in your body as we just kind of what if up it oh my god it's not so doomsday anymore <laughs> it's, I guess it's more peaceful um knowing right. that some of it is probably um I know I what were you calling it I call it a soap opera a uh, fake news fake right news. news right um a lot of it was fake news because I guess it's just mm -hmm. safe to feel that way you said earlier yeah, yeah. Um, yes yeah and you know learning how to say no to and being okay with that i guess this oh that's such nice. a great Carla conversation said, in your face <laughs> I don't want to interrupt. This is such a great conversation. I just want to let everyone on here know, because we are coming close to the close. I'm about to post a poll. You're going to see it pop up on your screen while we're continuing this conversation. If you can just go ahead and participate in that poll, there's about five questions on there. Just select yes or no and then submit. And we extremely appreciate it. Okay, now back to you, Kate. So sorry. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, you know, we could, again, if we were in a coaching session, you know, one on one or even in a group and we had longer, we could go into this in a lot more detail and start to explore with Evelyn. OK, let's look at this people pleasing, like not wanting to disappoint people. Where does that come from? We can clear that. But even just for yourself, like this is one of my favorite, favorite activities that I use for myself and with my clients, because, you know, we can all really screw ourselves over by getting into that story. Right. And it is just a story that's mostly negative to try to make sure that you stay alive and it's not that helpful but we cannot change how we're hardwired like we're just going to keep operating that way so we really need active practical tools that we can use on a daily basis to be like you know what like okay like here's the facts here's the story I'm making up and like what if it all worked out um and I think by what if upping, we're just opening ourselves up to more possibility because usually the mind is very limited. It's like good or bad, safe, not safe. It's this or that. Um, and so it's hard to um, strategize out of a challenging situation by just invoking the mind because the mind will keep us limited. But when we what if up, we can sort of start to get more in that energy of of what's possible and and expand what's possible. So I wanted to share share that. Um, I don't even know if we'll have time for more questions. Well, I know you guys are pretty strict on finishing at 12.30. So, um, but if anyone did have follow-up questions, um, so Taylor and Anna have my details and um, I always offer a free consultation. So if anyone's interested in talking further, um, just 
email me and we can set up time to have a consultation. It goes for an hour. We do it on the phone. Um, and then I also have like a 12 week live online class coming up, like specifically for people pleasers and perfectionists. So if you would want more details about that, um, feel free to email and let me know as well. Um, but I hope at the very least, like, please take this tool, practice it. If, if um, I will um, give uh, an outline of how to do it to Taylor and she will send that around, as well as a few slides just summarizing what I talked about, about how the mind works. Um, so you don't have to worry if you didn't take notes, but hopefully you just got a general sense of how this, of how this practice works. And so if you are feeling overwhelmed, know that it's normal, but also know that the answer isn't out here. It's not doing more. It's not trying to please people more. It's really an inside job and starting to reflect. And there's so many books and tools. I love Brene Brown, her, her two podcasts that she has, um, Unlocking Us is a great one, um, to really start to reflect on you know, your own thought processes, because that's really what's going to create the biggest change. And then gratitude, maybe try some kind of gratitude practice and an invitation for you to notice if you're using the word overwhelmed and to ask yourself what might be under that and maybe um, not to use it anymore. Um, so if you can take away those things. Hopefully, uh, you know, that will provide some support and relief moving forward. Great. Thank you so much, Kate. And I hope everyone did exactly what she said and did your own little sheet because I was able to visualize how this could work and even how this could work in various collaborations with other people. And I will make this really quick before I close out, but I can think about a long time ago, a what if that I did and it worked. And it was me getting promoted from an associate marketing manager to a marketing manager. The salary bump was really low. And I was trying to decide if I say anything. And I thought, well, if I say something, they're not gonna offer the job or they're not gonna still offer the job to me. So that's the fake news. I decided to meet with HR. I had all my information ready. And she said to me, wow, that was impressive. You really stood up for yourself. I'll see what I can do. It wasn't the full raise that I wanted, but it was a percentage. And she came back and said, so does this mean you're not going to take it? And I said, no, I'm definitely going to take it. And I appreciate you working for me, even for that percentage. And I'm going to come back to you next year with this same question. But she said, you know, if you didn't do that and stick up for yourself, no one else would have. So to me, that was a what if upping. And I was scared but I did it anyway, and it was positive. Mm -hmm. And so, you just saved yourself from a bunch of resentment. Yes. You know, that you may have felt because you weren't being paid enough. No, definitely, because that's how I am. I would have resented it. So, yes. Um, so, definitely. <laughs> but um, so, think about this because I started to think about so many scenarios as Kate was talking. So, please. Think about that, everybody, because I think uh, we can all figure out ways to make this work. So, Kate, thank you very much once again for joining us. We really appreciate it. And um, people who have, you know, who are on here, and again, I will email everyone, even people who are going to be watching this on replay. Um, please take advantage of Kate's offer because I know people who have done it in the past and said it was fantastic. So please do take advantage. Uh, Kate, thank you. And we look forward to seeing you again, maybe next time in person. Right. Um, really appreciate you taking the time with us. And the last thing I just want to say before we close everything out is um, if you could join us 
uh, a little less than two weeks from today, also lunchtime webinar, um, August 25th, which is a Wednesday. We have speakers Stan Phelps and Dave Rendall from uh, Purple Goldfish. And what we're going to be talking about is uh, Pink Goldfish 2.0, Defy Normal and Exploit Imperfection how differentiated experience, and we're calling that DX, uh, can help your business. So please register today, and we will have that up on the website this week. Otherwise, Kate, thank you for joining us, and everybody who was with us, thank you, and we will see you soon, and have a great remainder of your day, everyone. Bye. Thanks.